Hi, I'm Dave Benson, K1SWL. For those of you who don't know me, I was formerly the proprietor of Small Wonder Labs, a manufacturer of QRP kits. That was over uh, the interval from 1996 to 2017. Of course, I still keep my hand in with home brewing, uh, and I'd like to share a recent project with you. Uh, first, let's uh, go to screen share, and I'll announce the topic of, the, of this presentation and show you what we've been up to lately. The topic of my talk, of course, is anatomy of a transceiver. Thoughts on the better mousetrap. Uh, more recently, uh, here at home, uh, my industrial empire shrunk from an office space of 12 by 15 feet to something a little more modest. Uh, this is now the workbench. Uh, it's in an upstairs room and space for projects is quite limited. You see a digital storage scope, spectrum analyzer and computer there. Uh, I want to assure you that uh, this is not messy. Uh, if this were messy, uh, you'd know it. Uh, anyway, it suffices. One of the changes that happened, of course, was that it wasn't convenient to take coaxes uh, out of the space, uh, out a window, uh, there's a power line coming in. As a result, uh, I gained more shack space. This shack is actually over our small barn and it really is not much more than a closet. It's about five feet wide. So the, uh, the room stops or ends just off the left end of the workbench here. Also, I was standing as far back as I possibly could uh, without bumping into uh, other stuff within the facility. The lighting is great during the day. That's a, a north facing skylight overhead. And the coaxes go uh, down and to the right. There are two uh, video bulkheads, F connectors uh, that take the coaxes out. They go through the eaves and then out to the antennas. There was some spelunking involved there under the eaves. The uh, lamp incidentally is a steampunk style. Uh, it was made by an artisan about five miles from here. He used to be an electronics engineer and uh, probably thinks better of the, of the chains over to uh, building steampunk lamps. Most recently, in fact, um, most of the way through 2020, uh, I was working on a project called the Phaser, uh, a simple digital mode transceiver. Uh, I did the design work for it. As the next slide illustrates, uh, this is a three to four watt transceiver, uh, uniquely on the transmit side, uh, it used phasing single sideband. In practice, the opposite carrier, or excuse me, opposite sideband suppression was on the order of 35 dB. Really pretty good for such a simple uh, set of phasing circuitry. It was available with two pre-programmed frequencies, uh, FT8 and also the JS8 mode. And that second frequency was user reprogrammable. Uh, there were two push buttons on the board and the uh, frequency could actually be entered in uh, in Morse code fashion. Currently, the phaser is on hold for two reasons. Uh, first off, the uh, critical SI5351 uh, synthesizer IC is unavailable this year or uh, unaffordably so. Uh, there was apparently a serious fire at the foundry uh, and they're rebuilding, they're rebuilding the facility. Uh, however, it won't be back online until later this year. Uh, the second factor on that, uh, frankly, was fatigue. Uh, after about 1300 of these shipped for the 17 uh, through 80 meter bands and just under a hundred for a different version of the 15 and 10 meter phaser, uh, 
fatigue was really a factor. So it's on holiday. If anyone is interested in uh, building these phasers uh, component by component, uh, there's ample documentation on the website, uh, midnightdesignsolutions.com. And Craig Johnson, AA0ZZ, uh, generously offered to supply the critical pick for this project. Once my involvement with the phaser tapered back, uh, I was, of course, casting about for uh, an ambitious homebrew project, and I set myself a number of goals. They're listed here on this slide. Uh, I wanted to ensure that I had good audio and plenty of it. Uh, the project also added an LED display, uh, the serial type. I put a fair amount of effort in on uh, smooth break-in. Uh, it also uh, was important to me that the side tone sounded good, and it does. Uh, finally, and, and pretty obviously, I needed a, a QRP gallon, the full five watts. I met most of those goals, not all of them, and there were some setbacks along the way. Uh, I will uh, talk about them and, and share some of the saga at least. I built the project uh, largely with printed circuit boards. Uh, each board was a standard size. Uh, I did do some breadboarding along the way. Uh, this first board was the front end board for the receiver. And from left of, to right, you can see a, a tuned circuit uh, just to its right uh, is a MIMIC, an MAR3. Uh, MIMIC stands for monolithic microwave IC. Uh, and into a diode ring mixer, pretty close to the center of the board, uh, with some filtering for uh, a digital local oscillator coming in. Uh, to its right, another uh, mimic. Uh, I ended up uh, bypassing that uh, during this construction. And after that, uh, a discrete broadband amp with a gain of about 20 dB. Uh, that particular package proved to be overkill. Uh, I've now uh, shrunk it down considerably at, at this point. The second board I built uh, was a phasing uh, IF uh, block. Uh, it used a, uh, a scheme first uh, published in uh, engineering methods for RF design, EM, RFD, excellent volume uh, available from ARRL. It's uh, a first edition with minor reprintings. Uh, it's somewhat long in the tooth, but it's still very solid material. Passed through several types of filtering with an analog approach. It's uh, low pass filters uh, followed by a phase shifter. Uh, basically, the, these two phase shift blocks end up with uh, two audio components that are 180 degrees apart. And when combined over here on the right, what comes out is single sideband audio. I'll illustrate the first approach to this. And this was the analog approach out of uh, engineering methods volume. There's an adjustment pod here, several low pass filters. These big things here are uh, 3.3 millihenry RF chokes, and behind them a trifiler toroid used to split the incoming signal into two components. This worked wonderfully uh, up to a point. You right here, you'll see uh, in the back center, uh, you'll see an adjustment trimmer uh, that's necessary to phase up the two low pass filters accurately. These days, it's hard to get uh, high value trimmers, at, at least in uh, small dimensions. Anyway, uh, I had trouble adjusting this. I couldn't really tell if tweaking the trimmer uh, was making things better or worse. Part of the problem there is that the uh, 
that you're looking at a nulled signal to begin with. It's very small uh, and it's only a few millivolts uh, on a scope. Uh, that was superseded by a uh, quadrature sampling detector approach. Uh, this was popularized uh, by Dan Talo. Uh, the approach was used in the NorCal 2030. As you can see from the picture, uh, there's a lot less stuff on this board. Same adjustment pot, it's used to do the nulling. Uh, and this is a four to one in, in the back center of the figure. There's, this is a four to one uh, demultiplexer. The white things are, are capacitors. Uh, they are sit together. This circuit samples and holds uh, samples at, uh, at four times the uh, incoming signal rate. There's a combiner here. And from there, it's just uh, audio amplifiers. This is the phasing filter section. Uh, combining is done somewhere down, somewhere down in here. These jumpers here on the right center uh, are used to select either upper or lower sideband. Uh, this approach worked very well. Uh, as measured, I was able to get 50, that's 50 dB of opposite sideband suppression. And it was just spooky uh, to be able to watch a large input signal on the scope coming out of this board. I'd see several volts of audio uh, from a signal generator as it passed through zero B. On the other side, uh, there was virtually nothing on the scope uh, until up at about one and a half kilohertz. That's the point at which the uh, filter itself uh, was no longer registering the, uh, at the two signal components accurately. Here's something cool you can do uh, with an oscilloscope with an XY mode. Uh, I'm calling this fun with Lissajou figures. The output of the two uh, audio filtering channels, uh, those two outputs are 90 degrees out of phase. As a result, if you put them up on a scope in XY mode, you get a circle. Uh, if it doesn't work, you get, well, typically, tilted ellipses. If the uh, signal waveform uh, applied to the receiver varies in amplitude, then what you get is a circle that appears to breathe in and out. Uh, if you apply a more complex pattern to it, uh, then you get uh, concentric figures. It's uh, really kind of interesting under the right circumstances. And I'm going to stop this. As I said, uh, this approach worked very well, but there was an unfortunate instance uh, after I had it constructed and working so nicely. Uh, I managed to apply uh, reverse polarity DC power to it. It, uh, it continued to work after a fashion, but uh, was extremely noisy, uh, just totally unacceptable. I wound up replacing two instrumentation amps uh, on this board as a Hail Mary kind of approach. Uh, that didn't do the job. And those ICs, by the way, cost $9 a piece. They were probably overkill, uh, but I wanted to make sure it was right. At that point, uh, I knew when I was licked on the phasing approach and moved on to something a little more conventional. Third time's the charm. Uh, this is a conventional IF board. And you see a, an attenuator on the left, uh, matching uh, network and three crystal filter, and then uh, back down to uh, down to 50 ohms. Again, the discrete broadband amp uh, between the crystal filter and the eight pin uh, dip I see on the right. Again, about 20 dB of gain. The uh, the right hand side is the uh, familiar SA602 uh, or 612, uh, and it does a pretty good job for that application. 
Since I mentioned the topic of filtering, uh, I want to digress a little bit and talk about filtering and its impact on uh, received quality. This is an example of an audio active filter with smooth characteristics uh, on the left hand figure. You see it, it has a nice smooth curve. Uh, the downside with it is that it's a pretty slow roll off. Uh, in other words, you'd need a, quite a few of, of such stages to, to uh, end up with a sharp filter with some good qualities. I'll talk about those qualities. On the right is the phase delay as a function of frequency. The uh, cutoff frequency is right around here. This picture corresponds to the same frequencies as the one on the left. That's a good filter uh, in terms of distortion. Uh, it's not quite as uh, good if you want sharp filtering, as I mentioned. The next slide shows what happens uh, if you go for sharp filtering. Here's a filter with good roll off characteristics. In fact, there's actually about 3 dB of peaking in there. And from there, it will roll off uh, more quickly than with the previous slides filter. The, uh, this tool, by the way, is from Analog Devices Incorporated. And the tool is called Analog Filter Wizard. Very useful. Uh, on the right, uh, this peaked curve is actually the uh, phase delay for that very same filter. Uh, what this does is this high phase delay also corresponds to uh, some ringing and uh, long, well, ringing covers it, long fall times. The result is that the waveform is busier. Uh, you'll hear more stuff uh, in the audio. That's like putting a, a, a drinking glass or a seashell up to your ear. It's just tiring. Uh, why, here's why I mentioned this uh, with respect to that crystal filter. There's an example of a crystal filter uh, in the uh, engineering methods volume. Uh, for an eighth order filter, uh, if it's not visible on uh, clearly on your screens, there's a curve that looks very nice for gain. It, it goes up, it's got rounded shoulders uh, at the edges of the pass band. The fly in the ointment, of course, is the group delay. It comes up as well. Whoops. There's a horn, a spike here in group delay, and then back down. And again, at the other uh, corner of the filter skirt, it peaks up again. Uh, the, uh, this group delay at the edges was some 10 milliseconds uh, uh, in the case of this filter. Uh, the author remarked that uh, this was very busy and would probably be uh, quite unsuitable for use in a receiver. I'm back now, I'm gonna take a pause. <laughs> 